Does that make sense? You know, people won't, they won't try anything new. They'll only produce mediocre results if we beat them up. Does that make sense? So the deepest principle of, of uh, human nature is a craving to be appreciated. You know, call out those good behaviors. When you call out appreciative behaviors and say, hey, you know what, I really appreciated when you did X yesterday, people focus on doing that stuff even more. But make sure it's on the behaviors that you know will drive you to the results. When someone gives you positive, appreciative feedback, every time you see that person, they think, wow, so-and-so really likes when I do that. So you do it more. Now, don't get paranoid, but you are all being watched, scrutinized every single day by the people you lead. They're not just listening to the words you say. They're watching every action you take, from your body language to how you roll your eyes and they're developing beliefs based upon what they're watching. People will tolerate what you say. They will act on what they see you do as leaders. Leadership is not about your title, your, how big your office is, how many people report to you. It's about the congruency between what you say and what you do, how you live your life and how you go about your job. That's leadership. Real quick, let's just play, we're gonna close up here. So real quick, I often hated to do this stuff when I was in those states, but I'm gonna ask you to play along with me, please. Everybody, put your hands out like this in front of you. On the count of three, I want us all to clap. Like it, so it's one gigantic, simultaneous, thunderous clap. On the count of three. Are you guys ready? One, two, three. Let's try again. Try again. Try again. One, two, three. Now, you knew what I was doing, and I still got 75% of you. Here's the point. Were you following what I said or what I did? People are going to watch what you do. Words are cheap. One more thing. Do this really quickly. Right index finger out. As fast as you can. Point to your chin. Do you feel the confusion in the room? Multiply that by a thousand, and that's often the confusion we create within our organizations. I'm not, I mean, it's true. You want to derail yourself, and you want to, you want to become a, a very ineffective leader? Here's how you do it. Say one thing and act incongruently. People will never follow you again. Remember these words right here. These letters. Anybody know what that means? Do what you say you will do. You know, when I was with Tom Peters' company, Jim Cousins wrote a book called The Leadership Challenge, which is based on 20 years of exemplary leadership practices. The number one practice of exemplary leadership, model the way. Do what you say you will do. Set the example. Be the change you wish to see in the world. Everything you do is branding you. It's either reinforcing what people think about you or you're creating new thoughts about you. We all have a default brand. If I mention a name, within minutes, you'll have a few words to describe that person. Like right now, if I said Gordon, what's everybody thinking? <laughs> no, but it's true. We all have a default brand. There's an exercise in that workbook. I'd encourage you to do it. What it suggests, it's actually brand you is the title of the page. It suggests you go out and ask 10 people for five words that describe you when your name is mentioned to them. Ask 10 people at work, 10 people at home for five words that come to their mind when they think about you. Collect all 50 words, look for the common themes, and that is your default brand. For some of you, you'll get the words and you'll say, wow, that's great, that's how I want to be viewed. Some of you will get the feedback and you'll look at it and say, oh, I got some work to do. And if you got to shift what, the way people perceive you now, what does that model suggest you have to do? And how do you change the beliefs? New experiences. Very good. Nine, you guys tell me what you think the answer is here. 92% of people that belong to health clubs and 88% of people that own exercise equipment don't exercise. So you guys learned, I probably gave you five or six key new principles, models, tools here today. That's great to understand. It's great, great to recognize them to uh, you know, take ownership for them, even to, to have a plan on improving your solutions, go out and implement them. It does you no good at all if you don't use any of it. Take one thing that you've learned today and you can be proud.